From numerous indications, Jupiter isn't the kind of place you would want to travel to. You'd be excused for wanting to avoid Jupiter as much as possible, given its terrifying big red dot, double-strength gravity, horrifyingly dense dry atmosphere, and the fact that it appears to eat other planets. Now, excitingly, we have a better understanding of what Jupiter looks like than ever before, which is great news for those of us content to keep our distance from the king of planets. Recently, NASA made available fresh James Webb telescope photos that display the planet in all its splendor and, to put it mildly, they're just amazing. What unexpected discovery was made on Jupiter by the James Webb telescope? What strange phenomenon was found on the surface of Jupiter's moon? And when will NASA's newest mission actually touch down to explore Europa? Let's find out. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and is more than twice as large as all the other planets put together. Jupiter is the fifth in line to the Sun. Jupiter would be the size of a basketball if Earth was the size of a grape. Now, the Webb telescope has taken images that more clearly display its enormous storms, auroras and faint rings. In order to create an overall composite and give Earth a glimpse of the gas giant, several images from the telescope were combined. The result is a picture that shifts from orange and yellow near Jupiter's poles to blues and purples toward the center. According to NASA, you might also see far away galaxies and flimsy rings photobombing in the background. The photographs are so impressive that even NASA's scientists were supposedly taken aback. The images depict Jupiter as a planet covered with white streaks and patches as well as a brilliant aurora near its poles. Compared to the Hubble telescope, to which the Webb is a direct successor, the images are noticeably more vivid. As a collaboration between NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, the Webb mission was launched last December. The Webb is the biggest and most potent space telescope ever built. The James Webb Space Telescope is currently orbiting the Sun at a distance of about 930,000 miles from Earth. Since the telescope's mission is expected to last a decade, many more exciting images of our solar system may soon be available. We have never witnessed Jupiter in this way. Imke de Peter, Professor Emirata of Planetary Astronomy at the University of California, Berkeley stated, It's all quite fantastic. To be honest, we hadn't really expected it to be this wonderful. As part of an international effort, de Peter oversaw observations of Jupiter alongside Thierry Fouché, a professor at the Paris Observatory. De Peter said in this release, it's absolutely amazing that we can see details on Jupiter together with its rings, tiny satellites, and even galaxies in one shot. A sparkling cosmic spectacle of colliding galaxies and a dying star were revealed in the first batch of full-color photographs and data gathered by the groundbreaking telescope, which NASA unveiled in July. The near-infrared camera of the telescope, which has infrared filters that highlight the intricacies of the planet, took the two images of Jupiter that were taken last week and composites of numerous web photographs. The photographs were artificially colored to convert infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye, into the visible spectrum and highlights Jupiter's features. Judy Schmidt, a citizen scientist, processed the photographs. According to Schmidt, it is challenging to get images of Jupiter due to its rapid rotation. In contrast to Earth, Jupiter is a gas giant consisting primarily of hydrogen and helium and lacks a solid surface. It is believed to have shared the same fundamental components as a star but was never large enough to ignite. It also contains multiple rings, although they are fainter and formed of space dust rather than ice like Saturn's rings. The new photographs show Jupiter with its faint rings and two tiny moons, Almathea and Adrastea, in a wide field view. 
Our Jupiter system program, which examines the dynamics and chemistry of Jupiter itself, its rings, and its satellite system, may be summarized in this single image. But Webb doesn't only talk about Jupiter. The space telescope uses infrared light to illuminate previously invisible regions of the cosmos. Combined with the deep field images released the other day, these images of Jupiter demonstrate the full grasp of what Webb can observe, from the faintest, most distant observable galaxies to planets in our own cosmic backyard that you can see with the naked eye from your actual backyard," said Brian Holler, a scientist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, who helped plan these observations. We can definitely detect a black spot on the planet's left. This is Europa, one of Jupiter's Galilean moons and a crucial target in our solar system's hunt for potentially habitable environments. There are at least 50 moons on Jupiter, where a day lasts for around 10 hours. Galileo Galilei, an Italian physicist, made the first observation of the four largest in 1610. They are Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Another near-cam image shows a clear view of Jupiter's rings, which is possibly even more exciting. Yes, there are rings on Jupiter, and the Webb telescope has been able to reveal these distinctive characteristics with astounding clarity. Thebe and Metis are also seen on Jupiter in the most recent photos. The narrow band filters photos of Jupiter were created to offer beautiful views of the planet's whole disk. However, the abundance of further details about extremely faint objects – Metis, Thebe, the main ring, and Hazes – in those photographs with roughly one-minute exposures was a genuine and very welcome surprise. The pictures also show Jupiter's famous Great Red Spot, which appears white because it is reflecting the sunlight, according to NASA. The Great Red Spot is a storm that is larger than Earth and has been raging for ages. Jupiter currently has a storm that is big enough to cover Earth. The planned Europa Clipper mission will conduct in-depth research on Europa, which has the potential to support life, since it possesses a subterranean ocean beneath its frozen exterior. Scientists working with JWST are hopeful that the Space Telescope will be able to detect similar phenomena on Europa in future observations. For instance, the Cassini mission to Saturn was able to observe material plumes erupting from the subsurface ocean of the moon Enceladus. On December 30, 2000, at a distance of 9.7 million kilometers, Cassini made its closest approach to Jupiter and collected a wealth of scientific data. During the six-month flyby, some 26,000 photos of Jupiter, its hazy rings and its moons were captured. The smallest observable elements in this global color image of the Earth, which it created, are roughly 60 kilometers or 37 miles across. The flyby's discovery of Jupiter's atmospheric circulation was one of its key discoveries, which was made public on March 6, 2003. Scientists have long assumed that the light zones in the atmosphere, with their pale clouds, are areas of upwelling air, because many clouds on Earth form where the air is rising. Dark belts and light zones alternate in the atmosphere. Although too small to be seen from Earth, individual storm cells of upwelling bright white clouds can be seen in the black belts, according to an examination of Cassini's photos. Other atmospheric observations near Jupiter's North Pole included a swirling dark oval of high atmospheric haze that was roughly the size of the Great Red Spot. Infrared images showed characteristics of circulation close to the poles, including bands of winds that round the entire planet and nearby bands that are traveling in the opposite direction. The description of Jupiter's rings was included in the same announcement. Particles in the rings were found to be irregularly shaped as opposed to spherical and likely came from micrometeorite strikes on Jupiter's moons, most likely Metis and Adrastea. 
However, Jupiter's auroras have never previously been observed until now, thanks to the world's newest and largest space telescope. The James Webb Satellite Telescope captured images of Jupiter's northern and southern lights, as well as its polar haze in July. A planet circling a star other than the Sun is known as an exoplanetary system, and these systems are discovered and studied using the telescope. Investigating the atmospheres of exoplanets that may harbor life could yield crucial information in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. With the help of Webb, researchers will be able to travel back 13.7 billion years to the beginning of the universe when the first stars and galaxies formed. From the instant right after the Big Bang, which created our universe, to the present, when it is crowded with galaxies, stars and planets, the Webb Telescope will look at the entirety of cosmic history. Meanwhile, Europa, the fourth largest moon of Jupiter, may have liquid water trapped in its frozen shell. It is an ocean world covered in a thick ice coating where snow drifts upwards. According to a new study, the underwater snow originates in the global ocean and rises through the water to cling to submerged ravines and inverted ice summits. The formation of Europa's ice shell may be influenced by the same phenomena that occur beneath the ice shelves on Earth. It's possible that Europa's ice crust is not as salty as once believed. It's essential for engineers building NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft, which is getting ready to launch to Europa in October 2024, to comprehend the salt content of the ice crust. NASA created the Europa Clipper interplanetary spacecraft to examine Europa through a series of flybys while orbiting the gas giant. The Clipper's main objective is to ascertain whether the vast ocean of liquid water under the frozen surface of Europa supports circumstances conducive to life. Scientists may learn more about Europa's ocean salinity and capacity to support life by using hints from the ice shell. Between 10 and 15.5 miles, that's 15 and 25 kilometers thick, Europa's ice shell presumably rests on top of an ocean that is thought to be between 40 and 90 miles or 60 and 150 kilometers deep. In order to determine Europa's possible habitability or even the type of life that might exist there, scientists are interested in the ocean's salinity and chemistry. Previous studies have revealed that the ocean closest to Europa's shell resembles the water beneath Antarctic ice shelves in terms of temperature, pressure and salinity. The two processes by which water on Earth freezes beneath ice shelves were examined by the researchers. Congelation ice and Frazil ice. What's the distinction? Frazil ice drifts up through super-chilled seawater before resting beneath the ice shelf, whereas congelation ice forms from beneath the ice shelf. Both of these types produce ice that is less salty than seawater, and when the researchers extrapolated their findings to the age and size of Europa's ice shell, they found that salt water was even less salty. Europa may have a lot of crystalline ice, which would make the ice shell purer than previously thought. Only a very small portion of the salt in seawater is preserved by fragile ice. The strength, ice tectonics and heat conduction properties of the ice shell can all be influenced by its purity. According to Donald Blankenship, a senior researcher scientist at the University of Texas Institute for Geophysics, we can utilize Earth to evaluate Europa's habitability, quantify the exchange of pollutants between the ice and ocean, and determine where water is in the ice. The Europa Clipper spacecraft core is currently being constructed at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Spacecraft Assembly Facility. The clean room, where NASA crews have assembled spacecraft like Galileo, Cassini and the Mars rover, has been taken over by the core, which is 10 feet or 3 meters tall and 5 feet, that's 1.5 meters broad. 
In High Bay 1, a clean room at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where past illustrious missions have been prepared for flight, the mission team is presently putting Europa Clipper together. The spacecraft's flying hardware, which consists of engineering parts and scientific sensors, started being developed in 2016 and is anticipated to be finished by the end of 2022. These parts are sourced from all around the US and Europe and will be put together at JPL. The Europa UVS, an ultraviolet spectrograph built in San Antonio, Texas, was the first instrument to reach JPL. Europa UVS will look for evidence of plumes above the surface of Europa. The device gathers ultraviolet light and divides it into many wavelengths to learn more about the Moon's surface and atmosphere. As spacecraft parts arrive, they will be put together and put through another round of testing. Engineers must ensure that the instruments can connect with the spacecraft's software, power, subsystems and flight computer. The Europa Clipper will be moved to JPL's massive thermal vacuum chamber for testing that mimics the severe conditions of deep space once all the parts have been combined to form the large flight system. In order to make sure that the Europa Clipper can resist the jolting of launch, there will also be rigorous vibration testing. After that, a launch in October 2024 will take place from Cape Canaveral in Florida. NASA claims that Europa Clipper will be as big as an SUV and have solar arrays that span an entire basketball court when it's finished, which will make it easier to power the spacecraft as it travels to Jupiter's frozen moon Europa. In April 2030, the Europa Clipper will touch down on the Jovian moon. The spacecraft will gradually descend from a height of 1,700 miles or 2,735 kilometers above the surface of the Moon to only 16 miles or 25 kilometers above it over the course of almost 50 planned flybys of Europa. According to NASA, the Europa Clipper spacecraft will orbit Jupiter and make several close flybys of the Moon Europa to collect information about its atmosphere, surface and interior. Its complex payload will look into everything from the thickness of the ice cap to the characteristics of prospective plumes that may be spewing subterranean water into space, in addition to the depth and salinity of the ocean. On the other hand, in what appears to be a new era of space exploration, NASA recently announced that it had chosen 13 potential landing sites on the Moon as it gets ready to send astronauts back there as part of the Artemis mission. The first woman and person of color would step foot on the Moon as part of this mission, which would be the first to return crew members to the lunar surface since the Apollo missions of 1969 to 1972. It's really a new era of space exploration. Don't you agree? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.